I'm Andrew Texera, I'm an American artisan, and in this project video, I'll be guiding you through the process of making this traditional dovetail box. I prepared my materials according to the cut list that you can download on my website at AmericanArtisan.com. And if you need some help preparing your materials, we've made a video that you can find in the description below. So you can see I have laid out my dovetails on my tailboard, and I've also made a scribe line here with a tool called a marking gauge, and I'll refer to this in the video as the marking gauge scribe. Remember that, you're going to hear me say that a few times. If you need some help laying out your dovetails, I prepared a video that, to explain the entire process, and it's listed in the description below. I'll be using a Veritas 20 TPI dovetail back saw. There's a lot of different tools we use for dovetailing, and if it might seem a little bit overwhelming. We've prepared a video to help you with tool selection. It's listed in the link below. I'm going to start off with my tailboard nice and tight in the vise. I'll line the teeth of the saw up on these 90 degree lines that are on the end grain of the board. I'm going to make a couple of saw curves by drawing back slowly. Once I've made about three curves, I'm going to, I'm going to start cutting. So when I start on my, in my curve, I'll be holding the saw at 90 degrees, but once I have a good trough, I'm going to angle the blade at 14. And then I'll start leaning in to my cut. As I get close to that marking gauge scribe I was talking about, I'm going to tilt the saw forward till I just barely hit the scribe, tilt it back till I hit it on the other side, and then draw back once. Now I'm ready to move on to my next cut. I'm going to cut all of my left angled cuts and then all of my right. Again, angling forward and angling back. Now that I've cut all my left angle cuts, I'll cut all my right. Again, every single time as I approach that marking gauge scribe, I'm angling that, the saw blade forward. Well, I just barely hit it. So now I've made all of the cuts that are going to determine how well my dovetail fits. And now I have the issue of removing all of this waste in between. On the sides, I can get at that easily. I can loosen my tailboard from the vise and turn it on its side. Now I can use my same dovetail back saw to cut out the waste, making sure that my saw is on the waste side. So I'm lining it up right with that marking gauge scribe. As I get close to where my other saw cut is, I'm going to slowly twist the blade. You can see that piece flexing there. As I get closer, it'll break right off. It'll leave me a little bit of waste in there to clean up with the chisel, but that way I don't go past the other saw cut. I'll repeat this on the other side. So now I have my waist removed on my outer half tails, and now I need to get the waist out on my inner full tails, and there's two ways we can do that. 
One way is to lay the board flat. Then I'll take a chisel. I'll put it ahead of my marking gauge scribe and pull it back until I hear it click right in. And you can hear it click in there. Then I'll hold it up at 90 degrees and stamp it with my mallet. I'm not looking to go all the way through. I want to go about halfway. Then I'll flip it over. Hold it back and stamp again. You notice here that it's starting to come out along the end. So you can see compared to this one that we haven't cut yet, that these fibers are pushing through the end grain. That means that I've severed all the fibers of the wood and I've cut through to the other side. So to get that waste out, I'll remove my chisel, lift the board up and use my mallet to tap those fibers back down. Now that I've done that, I'll use a blunt object. A nail set is ideal. Whatever you do, don't use a sharp object like a chisel because you could cut yourself. And I'll press down from the face with that nail set until the waist comes out on the back. Now I just have a little bit of waste to remove with my sharp chisel. to get the rest of the material out. I'll check it from the face and then again from the back. And now all of the material has been relieved from this dovetail. Let me show you a second method. I can also use my jeweler's saw and sneak it right into my saw curve. Once I'm down there, I'm going to rotate it. And as I rotate it, I'm going to move like I'm cutting. But I'm not actually cutting yet until I'm at parallel with my marking gauge scribe. And then I'm just going to cut across to relieve that block of waste. And then it comes right out. So you can see I've relieved the majority of the waste. And I'll get the rest with my chisel. Again, I'll drag it back until it clicks right into the marking gauge scribe. We're using that as our reference. That's going to set our chisel true every time. I'll go in about halfway, then I'll turn it over and do the same process, drag it back till it clicks and stamp that. If there's any remaining waste, I can get it out with my nail set. So that's two methods to get the waste out of your full dovetail. The first method is ideal to use with softwoods like this pine, and the second method is preferable when you're dovetailing hardwood. Now we'll go on to the next step, which is transferring these tails onto our pin board. So to mark my tail boards onto my pin boards, I'll start off with my block plane. I'll place the sole of the plane flush with the front of my bench, and then place my pin board in. I'm going to hold it approximately flush tighten my vise, and then just make sure that it is flush. If it's high, I can tap it down with my mallet. If it's low, I can tap from underneath. Once I have it perfectly flush, I will then take my tail board and place it over my pin board. We have a dado on the bottom. I need to make sure that my dados line up. The dado on my pin board should be facing the inside of the bench or the sole of the plane. I'm going to line it up on the end. I'm also going to line up my marking gauge scribe and make sure that that, that lines up with the inner shoulder of the pin board. One of the reasons why I use my block plane is because the metal is reflective and I can see when it's closed and when it hasn't. Now it's closed. I'll use something flat like the back of my chip carving knife to make sure that the bottoms line up. And that looks good. Now I'll transfer my tailboard onto my pin board by dragging the knife gently, holding it against the insides 
of my tails. Don't try to force the knife anywhere it doesn't want to go. If you don't get the full length, don't worry, we can extend that line after. If you try to fit it into a small corner, it can make the knife turn a little bit sideways and your transfer won't be very accurate. Now you can see, I have transferred lines. They're not going the full length, but that's okay. I'm gonna move my block plane. With both hands behind the knife, I'm gonna slide the knife till it clicks into that mark and just rock it gently back and forth. You need to do this in the vise. If you slip, you could cut yourself. Now that I've extended all of those lines, I'll use a number 005 mechanical pencil and just drag it in the knife line. I don't want to change it, I just want to make it a little bit easier to see. Now that I've dragged that and made those lines a little bit more visible, I'm going to use my dovetail saddle square and just extend those lines down until they hit the marking gauge scribe. Nice thing about using a mechanical pencil is you can usually feel the tip of that pencil click right in that scribe. I try not to go past with my pencil line because then I usually go past with my saw. I'll do this on both sides. I also like to make an X to mark the waste part that I'm cutting out. Now my Tailboard is transferred onto my pin board and I'm ready to start cutting. So I like to start with the wide side of my pin towards me. I want my saw blade very slightly in the waist side with the tips of the, uh, of the blade just barely touching that scribe. And then I'm going to draw back once. And once I have a good little trough, I'm going to start cutting. This time I'm going straight down at 90 degrees. And again, as I approach my marking gauge scribe, I'm going to angle back until I just barely hit the scribe, angle forward until I just barely hit it on the face, and then draw back once. I'll continue this doing all of my rights, then all of my lefts. Now I've cut all of my pins and I need to get the waste out from in between. To do that, I'll grab my driller saw again, slide it right down into the saw kerf. As I get to the bottom, I'm going to stay just a little bit above my marking gauge scribe. I'm going to start moving the saw back and forth, but I'm not really cutting it until I've rotated it. And now I'm going to try to stay about a sixteenth higher than the marking gauge scribe. As I get close to my previous saw curve, I slow down, and that, get, that gets the majority of the waste out for us. Now I'll proceed on the next side. Every now and then these things break. That's not a problem. I'm just going to replace my saw blade. All right, new blade. Let's continue re relieving the waste from in between. I want to stay just above that marking gauge scribe. As you get close to the pin, I'll slow down and take that piece out. Now that I have most of the waste out, I'll use a sharp chisel. I'm going to get the corner of that chisel right on the marking gauge scribe and start sliding across. I'll come from one side and then the other. I won't be able to go all the way through.
So I can't go all the way through, but I've gone from the side of each pin to the other. So now I can rotate the board. I'm gonna take my widest chisel to get a nice wide reference point. I'm gonna hook the corner right in that marking gauge scribe, slide it across. Make sure it's nice and tight. That's why we always keep both hands behind the chisel. Something slips, you never want your hand in the path of that sharp chisel. If you're having trouble cutting, you can just rotate the chisel to twist the waist out of the way. And the closer you stay to your marking gauge scribe when you're using your jeweler saw, the easier this step will be. Sometimes you can cut a little at a time until you get to that final height. Now that I've gone across, I'm going to continue and get the remainder of that waste out. As I get towards the middle, my wide chisel is going to be a little bit too wide. I'll switch to a narrower one to finish it off. Now that I have my shoulder pretty clearly defined, you can see I have a small amount of waste at the bottom of my pin. I'm going to rest this, the back of my chisel against the side of the pin and just press down very lightly. I'll do that on all sides. Now I'll use my, rest my chisel on that shoulder and just bring it right up. Right up to the edge of the pin. Sometimes if you have a stubborn piece, you can press your chisel in and then twist, and that will help release it. You want to get all of that waste out. Now that we have a nice clean shoulder, all the way down to the corners. We're ready to tap our tailboard on and see how our fit is. I'm going to place my tailboard on top and I'm just going to try to get it to catch. If it doesn't catch, there could be a reason. I'm noticing that there's a small amount of waste right there. I'm going to get rid of that with my chisel and then try again. I'm lining it up on the marking gauge scribe and just gently pressing down. Now I'll rotate it and do the other side. And use my chisel to clean it up. That way set out of the way, we'll try it again. I like to get it to just sit on there. and give it a tap. Before I go all the way, I'm going to re remove it, and I'm going to look for any areas that it's crushing. Often the best indicator is on the back. See how it's crushing there? That means I can re remove a little bit of the material for an easier fit. A small amount of crush is okay on softwoods. It actually makes it for a nice tight joint. But if you're dovetailing hardwood, you're going to need to make it go down easy so it doesn't crack. To make sure the waste is removed all the way down to the shoulder. So let's set it on there. Give it a tap. So this is starting to seat nicely, but if I keep tapping here and here, I could have one tight pin and one loose pin. What happens, that could cause a crack that wouldn't happen otherwise. So I like to take a second board, place it over the top, 
and hit that with my dead blow mallet. That way the pressure is evenly distributed. After a couple taps, I'll check, make sure there's no signs of a crack. I have some waste here. That means it's a little bit tight. That means I can trim that pin down a little bit more. Let's give it one more try with our board on top. So here's our completed dovetail. It'll take some time to get them to fit this snugly. I suggest that you start off with the softwood like pine and work your way up to some softer hardwoods like mahogany. Once you've completed all four corners, you'll be ready to glue up your box and we'll take care of that in the next video.